Hello, Marvel United fans. It's Andrew Fantasia here, and it's been a minute. Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie, where we just love talking about this crazy, wonderful, stupid, awesome, brilliant, giant, ridiculous board game, Marvel United, and all the wonderful things you can do with it, and all the hypothetical things that you could possibly do with it in the future. We have had a hypothetical season four we have ranked the multiverse expansions. There's there's just so much going on here. Uh, and we are just are, are dedicated to our goal here of making the wait for Marvel United Multiverse just as short as possible uh, to get us through it because it's still quite a ways away until the end of March. So we're here to talk shop. And today shop means something a little different. Uh, I'm wearing blue which is the standard sort of designated color, if you will, of a certain other brand of comic books. The distinguished competition of Marvel, we're talking DC. Um, and this is exciting for me because even though I'm a guy who obviously adores Marvel United and who also adores the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I, am, I have a podcast with one of my best friends where we talk about the MCU all the time. Like I am a, a Marvel lover. My heart bleeds Spider-Man. Uh, however, I am a huge fan of the DC universe. And when I say that, I mean just like the characters in the world that DC encompasses, I have always loved them. Arguably more than I even love the worlds of Marvel, even though Marvel's way better at making movies out of those worlds. Uh, so we all here, and when I say we all, I mean all of you Marvel United fans alike, uh, we have all sort of toyed with the notion of there being a possible DC United and what that might entail. With that being said, uh, I have been working over the summer to come up with a season one, if you will, of DC United and what that might look like. And I didn't stop there, though. Uh, I kind of went beyond that, uh, but we'll get there when we get there. In the meantime, though, I just thought as a fun little experiment, and I'm sure there have been plenty of others who have done this already, but since we kind of do this sort of thing here on Digital Charcuterie, I've decided to slap together what a hypothetical season of DC United might look like and present it to all of you. And considering the CMON Expo has just happened and they brought out Deceased, which is going to be their Marvel Zombies DC equivalent, we now know they have a licensing agreement with DC. So is it only a matter of time? I don't know, but that got us all pretty darn excited. The idea of somewhere down the line having Batman fight Spider-Man, I mean, it, it could happen in this game, maybe. But regardless, I crafted a first season of DC United, and I went about it like this. We all know, as much as we love these franchises and characters, we all know that they really are often derivative of one another, right? With the exception of some really unique characters like Batman, like Spider-Man, there really are parallels that you can draw. I mean, you can look at Adam and say, yeah, that's Ant-Man. Or you can look at Namor and say, yeah, that's Aquaman. Like there are so many parallels you can draw and they are obvious and they're right out there. So I figured, why not just embrace that wholeheartedly and look at it through that lens? So I looked at this season one of a DC United with the idea of what did they put in season one of Marvel United? What did they give us as Marvel fans? And then what is the parallel of that to DC fans? And I just sort of tried to find that mixture and then I carried that over into the rest of the, the DC United stuff that I did. So with all that out of the way, Let's take a look at DC United Season 1. And maybe, just maybe, in the near future, this will no longer be just hypothetical. But let's start at the very beginning with our core box. Okay, so the core box of Marvel United was very Avengers heavy. Obviously, the movies were hot at the time. In essence, it took the most popular characters in Marvel at the time, excluding, you know, one or two like Spider-Man, and slapped them onto a box that everybody would want to buy because of its popularity. You know, you have people like Captain America, Iron Man, the big names 
who are going to sell the most boxes. So why fix what ain't broken? That's exactly what's happening here. The core box of DC United Season 1 is going to be Justice League heavy, since that is the DC equivalent of the Avengers. And in this core box, we have 10 characters, because all good core boxes do, starting with our six heroes, who are Batman, Cyborg, The Flash, Green Lantern, the Jon Stewart version, and Jon Stewart will be the first character in this season, but not the last, to have the cool little translucent effects on his mini because he's a Green Lantern. He's going to have translucent green effects, maybe like shooting out of his ring or something. Since he's an architect, I would imagine it would probably be like a big steel girder. Superman and Wonder Woman. Everybody has heard of those. They are arguably some of the most marketable names in DC. They're going to sell boxes. For our three villains... I went with villains who are just sort of synonymous with most of the heroes in this box. And I wanted to go for the obvious choices because with a core box, that's really what you should do. So I went with Cheetah, the Joker, and Lex Luthor. Put Lex Luthor and Joker's faces on a box next to Batman and Superman. Everybody is going to know what's happening. Cheetah is to Wonder Woman what Joker is to Batman. So I thought, let's have her throw her hat into the ring too. She's not as popular, but you know what? Taskmaster was not that popular either, but he still made a good impression in season one of Marvel. So Cheetah's in there. And for our 10th character, I opted to go for an anti-hero. Uh, unlike season one of Marvel, I thought, why keep a good thing down? Let's have anti-heroes all throughout. So our anti-hero for season one is arguably another one of the most recognizable faces of DC, Miss Harley Quinn. And there you have it. Like that is a core box, right? That is, you. I don't think you could do a core box more core boxy than this. In fact, if DC United does become real and the core box doesn't look like this, I'll be straight up shocked. Maybe Cheetah might be replaced by someone else, but honestly, I think that this is as core boxy as DC possibly gets. I love this. I'm sticking with this as my core for the first season. In season one of Marvel, the villain expansion, the sort of big final boss of the season was Thanos and the Black Order. And even though Thanos does have a DC equivalent, I didn't choose to go specifically for him. Instead, I, I kind of took a little bit of a right turn at Albuquerque here. Uh, we are still dealing with a powerful cosmic villain, but we're going through a different avenue here. For the villainous expansion, I went with Reign of Zod. And in Reign of Zod, we have three villains, and they are Non, Ursa, and Zod himself. And it's a, a very similar deal to Infinity Gauntlet. All three of these can be played as separate villains, but you can also do a Reign of Zod challenge mode where you've got to face Non and then Ursa and then Zod. Work your way through them. It's a gauntlet. It works. Zod is a Superman villain that's always been terrifying if you think about it because he's a Kryptonian. He's so powerful. I wanted to save some of the bigger, even heavier hitters for the other seasons. So I just thought Zod's a great uh, level one final boss. So that's what we went with. And in true Kickstarter fashion, if you decide to back this, you get the core box and the villain box. Together, you get a Kickstarter bonus. And in past games, it's been usually a team of villains. So I thought, let's do the same thing. The team of villains you get as a Kickstarter bonus, if you pledge, is the Royal Flush Gang. These guys cannot be faced separately. Uh, they work more like the uh, the Wrecking Crew here, but they are five characters, ten Jack, Queen, King, and Ace, and you face off against them as the Royal Flush Gang. These guys are a lot of fun. They're a very visually striking team, and I think having minis of these guys would be really, really cool because they're very underrated. Not a lot of people know about them, but they're the ones I wanted to see here as a Kickstarter bonus. And now it's on to our expansions. And for our first expansion, once again, if I look back at Marvel United, they took one of the key members of the Avengers, namely Thor. They removed him from the equation and gave him his own box full of his own homies and enemies and made that an expansion. Well, we're going to do the same thing here. So you'll notice that the Justice League lineup in the core box was noticeably missing one Fishman. That's why we have Atlantis Awakes. And Atlantis Awakes contains three heroes and a villain. You've got Aqua Lad, Aqua Man, Mira, and our villain is the dastardly Black Manta. 
Aqualad, Aquaman, and Mira will all have translucent water effects on their minis. Because that'll look incredible, and I love when that happens. Aquaman's pocket of the DC Universe has always been pretty cool. I love the looks of these guys. I'm sure for painters, these would be really fun characters to paint. This just feels like a very atypical season one kind of United expansion. For the next expansion, Marvel took another very popular character, being Spider-Man, and uh, gave him his own box as well. While I feel like we needed Batman in the core box, I still want to do a separate thing where I put Batman's world in its own little box. So presenting the next expansion, which is Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights is very similar. Three heroes and a villain. You get Batgirl, Nightwing, and the Tim Drake version of Robin. And you can pit them against the Penguin. This to me feels like a no-brainer. These are characters people are going to really, really want. They're not necessarily characters that would sell a core box. So, boom, you slap them in an expansion. This one could be a, an expansion that goes to retail like Spider-Man did because it will sell. This will work wonders. You might even say it'll work boy wonders because there's two of them in there. hey -oh! Next up, probably one of the most popular teams in recent DC history, the Teen Titans expansion. And for this one, I drew from a few different flavors of Teen Titans. We have Cyborg in the core box already, and he fills a Teen Titan slot and a Justice League slot, so that's pretty groovy. So we're filling out this roster here with three heroes, Beast Boy, Raven, and Starfire, who's my favorite. And after that, we've got one villain, Deathstroke, arguably their most notorious rogue. But I didn't want to stop there, so we also have an anti-hero, and this is a deep cut going way back to 90s comics. Say hello to Terra. Terra was a Teen Titan, and then she betrayed the Teen Titans uh, in a very infamous twist. So I thought Terra would make a great addition to the roster of anti heroes. This is a great, solid expansion. Again, this could even be a retail one because I think a lot of people would dig this. And speaking of anti-heroes, our next expansion is going to dive into that world, but it's actually going to be, it's not going to have as many purple minis as you would think. And that is the Suicide Squad. This has become a household name, uh, so why not throw it in uh, as an expansion box with the following characters. Katana and Rick Flag as heroes, Blockbuster as your villain, and Amanda Waller as an anti-hero. Plus, to sweeten the pot just a little bit, we'll make this a retail box. However, if you pledge on Kickstarter and get it early, you will get the Kickstarter exclusive hero, Peacemaker. Suicide Squad is tricky, uh, but I think that this is a pretty decent combination of characters that have passed through these revolving doors of this team. This would excite me. I like this, especially Katana. Katana's a really cool uh, Suicide Squad character. So having her front and center on the box would just make that box look pretty nifty. Looking back at Marvel, they broke the bank, as far as I'm concerned, when they made Return of the Sinister Six. That expansion alone was kind of what prompted me to say, I should really invest in this game because I love Spider-Man villains. And when it comes to finding a DC counterpart for Spider-Man villains, let's face it, nobody has a roster of villains as exciting and as interesting as Batman's roster of villains. So with Return of the Sinister Six as our baseline here, I am proud to present the DC United expansion, Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum contains five villains, Bane, Black Mask, Poison Ivy, Scarecrow, and Victor Zaz. You can face all five of them individually at any point, but this box also comes with Arkham Asylum mode, in which you can face off against all five of them together as a team. You are trapped within the confines of Arkham Asylum. They have broken free. They're causing untold havoc, and it's your job to lock them back up. And yes, as you have probably already guessed, in future seasons of DC United, Arkham Asylum, just like the Sinister Six, will become modular. So you could swap out 
any five Batman villains and have your own customized Arkham Asylum encounter. This alone would make me go all in on a DC United. However, I didn't want to stop there. Another DC hero who has a huge roster of villains that I thought it would be fun to take advantage of is The Flash. So piggybacking on this, I present to you the Rogues expansion. And this is the same deal. You were actually getting six characters, four villains and two anti-heroes, and those are Abracadabra, Mirror Master, Pied Piper, The Top, and Captain Cold, and Heat Wave as your anti-heroes. Heat Wave will have a little translucent fire effect coming out of his gun. And this is the same deal. All of these villains can be fought individually, or you can face off against them as the Rogues, a team of six Flash villains who are all interchangeable as we unlock more rogues throughout this and other future seasons of DC United. Why have only one customizable villain team when you can have two? I love it. This would make me smile. I'm putting it in here. And now we come to the stretch goal box. Everybody's favorite box. At least mine because you get so much cool stuff inside of these. And I looked to the season one stretch goal box as sort of a baseline. I looked at how many minis you get in it and I didn't want to overshoot it by too much because that would feel unrealistic. And I didn't want to undershoot it. I wanted to kind of find that sweet spot where it almost matches up. And I think we got there. The season one Marvel promo box had 35 heroes and nine villains for a total of 44 characters. Well, here we have 25 heroes, 16 villains, and three anti-heroes, and that still works out to 44 characters. So the box can be the exact same size, nothing's overdone, it all fits like a glove. Let's take a look at who's in the stretch goal box, starting with the villain, Amazo. Amazo is a Justice League villain, he is a living computer. He's very cool looking. He's got this, like these Mr. Spock ears. He's always had just a great look. He's colorful. I love Amazo. So I want to see what we can do with uh, an Amazo thrown into the mix. He's kind of like the DC version of Ultron, I guess, is the best way to put it. Next is the Atom, who can shrink down to minuscule sizes, hence his name. He's a great fit, right? He's, he's a very popular DC character. I want to see him in here. Next, we have a hero who is probably DC's answer to Spider-Ham, and that is Batmite. He's kind of shown up in the past decade or so. I think he's a newish character. A lot of people seem to love Batmite. He's, he's pretty funny. So I've got Batmite here as a stretch goal, because why not? It's fun. Our next stretch goal is a hero who I think is really cool. I play as her a lot in Injustice 2. It's Black Canary. Black Canary's awesome. Uh, she's just a really cool, solid character. She's got a great look. She's got a cool power. I want to play as Black Canary. I also want to play as Black Lightning, our next stretch goal hero. This guy's awesome. Uh, he had a really fun show, too, in the Arrowverse. And because it wouldn't be perfect otherwise, Black Lightning is going to have translucent yellow lightning effects all over his miniature. Bronze Tiger, who I don't know too much about, uh, but I remember just him having a, a really cool costume, and he just seems like a mainstay hero that's been there throughout all the years. So we're putting Bronze Tiger in there. The beautiful thing about these stretch goal boxes is it's the perfect place to put kind of underused, undersung heroes and villains. Next up, we're going to add to the Suicide Squad roster with an anti-hero, Captain Boomerang. He's going to be purple. You can play as him as a hero. You can also face off against him as a villain. And he was a rogue. So he will also come with a interchangeable uh, sort of set of cards where he can be played against in the rogues villain team. Speaking of interchangeable anti-heroes, our next one is Catwoman. The cat burglar with the heart of gold and the ridiculously revealing outfits. Catwoman's going to be a hero and a villain. I come from the old-fashioned Batman where, to me, she's always been a villain, but I get it. They, they made her just more of a noble thief. She is going to be purple, obviously. You can play as her. You can play against her. And she's also going to be interchangeably added to the Arkham Asylum mode. So you can face off against her in Arkham Asylum. I don't think she's insane, but she would probably end up locked in there anyway. Especially the Michelle Pfeiffer version. She was scary. Next is the Wonder Woman villain, Cersei. She's got all kinds of crazy magical powers, so she will be a fun supernatural villain 
to go up against. And after Cersei is a hero that, even though he doesn't have powers or a costume, he's just such a mainstay DC hero. We got to have him in here. And that is Commissioner Jim Gordon. A Batman world without Commissioner Gordon is not a Batman world that I want to live in. So I want to throw him in here. I want you to be able to play as Commissioner Gordon. If you can play as Nick Fury, you can play as Commissioner Gordon. Next, we have the villain Count Vertigo, uh, who I would hate to go up against because he kind of spins everything around and plays with your equilibrium. And I uh, get nauseous really easily, so I would not want to have to deal with Count Vertigo in real life. Thankfully, though, dealing with him in this board game sounds much more manageable. Next is the hero Crimson Fox, who is a, a thief as well. I think she steals paintings. And if I remember right... I think it's a pair of twins who uh, pretend to be one person and both of them are Crimson Fox. If my trading card memory serves me right anyway. Next, we're getting a villain who I admittedly did not hear about until recently, and that is Damien Dark. He showed up in the Arrowverse a bunch uh, and he was very powerful. He had a lot of telekinesis. I don't know what this guy's deal is, but he has become insanely prolific in the DC world. Uh, and apparently he showed up a lot in the books too. So I'm going to put Damien Dark in here uh, just because it seems like he's kind of on the DC pulse right now. And next we have our final anti-hero of season one. I know not a lot of anti-heroes this season, but there'll be more. Uh, but it is going to be Deadshot, the next character who can be added to the Suicide Squad roster. And he can also, as a Batman villain, be added to the Arkham Asylum modular mode. Uh, he just, he likes to shoot people and he's really, really good at shooting people. If you ever played Arkham City, you know how scary it can be to go up against Deadshot. Next is one of my all-time favorite DC heroes. He is the DC answer to Doctor Strange and he also has his medical degree. It's Doctor Fate. And look at that costume. That is one of the best costumes in comics. I don't care. Come at me. I love it. Dr. Fate is going to be a playable character. He's going to have lots of magic spells and sorceress abilities. His mini is going to have him floating around with his cape billowing out. I can see it now. And I'm already waiting in line at the game store, even though they don't even have Spider Geddon yet. We're going to stick with people who have their medical degree. And we're going to jump over to the villainous side of things, though, with the Wonder Woman villain, Dr. Poison. She actually had a small role in the Wonder Woman movie. She, I think she was working with the, uh, the Germans, uh, but she's always coming up with poisons and concoctions and horrible things. She has syringes on her person at all times, and you do not want her to prick you with any of them. Let's just say that. And then next, we have another Wonder Woman character, a hero this time, Donna Troy, who I'm not saying I had a crush on her whenever she popped up in a comic book, but I'm also... Not saying I would turn her down if she asked me to the Harvest Dance. So let's just put that on the table and have it be what it is. But Donna Troy is a great character and she has become a mainstay of Wonder Woman's world. So let's have her here. Next is Fire. She is a DC hero that uh, I remember being really enamored with because I love how she had green hair. And when she transformed into her fire mode, she wasn't red. She was still green. I always thought that was awesome. So fire is going to be a mini with the translucent plastic and it's going to be green. So she's basically going to look like uh, a female version of the human torch mini, but instead of red, green, right? Simple as a pimple. I can't wait to see what that would look like being held in my hand. I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Speaking of green, another super popular DC character who needs to show up, and this is a perfect place for him, is of course the green arrow, Oliver Queen himself. He is a modern-day Robin Hood, robs from the rich, and defeats corruption and helps the poor. He's Green Arrow. What more can you say? He is DC's answer to Hawkeye. Hawkeye was in the stretch goal box. Green Arrow's in the stretch goal box. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern. To me, he's sort of the vanilla Green Lantern, and I find him kind of boring because of that. He really doesn't have a personality. Even though I love the Green Lantern stories, and I've read so many of them, I really prefer... Uh, John Stewart and Kyle Rayner and, and Guy Gardner, right? So that's why I wanted to put John Stewart in the core box. Like he's just more of the, the classic, likable Green Lantern, whereas Hal Jordan is just kind of cardboard. But I know he means a lot to a lot of people, so you have to include him. And also, Hal should have translucent green effects on his miniature. Uh, the next hero we're going to unlock is... Hawk Girl. The Hawk Girl Hawkman story is to me one of the best stories in the DC universe. It's so unique. If you don't know their story, 
look it up, man. It's it's insane. It's so cool. And let's just go right ahead and reveal the next one is going to be Hawkman. So you're going to get both of these characters. They're going to have beautiful minis with their wings. And I'm going to play as them a lot because I like them a lot. And I can see their cards now, right, as if I'm holding them in my hand. I'm already excited. So I'm looking forward to having them be unlocked in this hypothetical game that doesn't exist yet. Next, we're going to jump up to a Green Lantern villain. He's going to be an oversized mini, probably. Probably makes sense to be a little bit over, at least a little bigger, like how the Brood Queen was. And that is Hector Hammond. Because Hector Hammond's whole thing is he has a normal-sized body, but a giant head. And he can't talk, but he can communicate telepathically. And he's weird, and he's always sweaty and gross. Next is a hero who is, pardon the pun, a very cool hero. Her name is Ice. She uh, has been part of the, I believe, the Justice League or the Justice Society. I can't remember offhand. On again, off again, girlfriend of Guy Gardner. Ice is also best friends with Fire, which I always thought was really, really fun that the two of them were kind of this odd couple. She will have translucent ice effects on her mini somehow. Next, we're going to unlock a Kryptonian hero, Jor-El. I've always loved the Kryptonian suits and how the different clans of Krypton have different suits. They really played with that a lot in Man of Steel. Um, but I just, I love the idea of having another Kryptonian with a similar suit to Superman and jor fits the bill so well. Uh, he's a very beloved part of the Superman mythos. So let's get him in there as a playable character. He might be a little overpowered. So let's say he's the Adam Warlock of this stretch goal box. Next we have Kid Flash the sidekick of Adult Flash. Kid Flash is, is great. The Flash world is very dense. There's a lot going on. So I want to throw as many of those characters into this game as possible. He can be this stretch goal box's equivalent of Quicksilver, right? Makes sense to me. Next, we're unlocking the villain Killer Croc. And he is going to come, obviously, with an interchangeable mode where he can be added to Arkham Asylum and you can face off against him and four other inmates. Next is a hero who absolutely needs to be here, Martian Manhunter. This is a Justice League character who is beloved by all. I mean, so many people would say he's their favorite. Martian Manhunter is just a great character. In my opinion, he is the heart and soul of the Justice League, even more so than Superman is. So, of course, we want to get Martian Manhunter in here. Next, we're getting a Superman villain by the name of Metallo. And if I remember right, Metallo's got kryptonite inside of him, so it's hard for Superman to get close and beat him up. Uh, but Metallo has always been sort of a mainstay Superman rogue, so he's showing up here. Another hero who's going to come in here is Pantha, uh, and I guess she would have uh, she would be the equivalent of Marvel's Tigra. Uh, I think they kind of play off each other really well. Uh, but Pantha has a great look. Uh, her trading card was a lot of fun. She's our next hero here. Our next villain is also going to be a Superman villain, and that is Parasite, one of the coolest looking Superman villains. I really like the look of Parasite, and he's had different looks, and they've all been unique and interesting. Uh, and I want to see what happens when you go up against Parasite, because he's probably going to sap your powers. And the more he saps, the stronger he gets. So I imagine he would make you flip over your super-powered cards, and every time he does that, maybe he gains HP or something. I don't know. Parasite would be a lot of fun to play against. Speaking of fun characters, our next unlockable character is the hero, Plastic Man. He stretches, he shrinks, he goes up and down. He's Plastic Man. I mean, look at him. He's hilarious. He might be DC's answer to Deadpool, maybe, because he's just so snarky and tongue-in-cheek, and I think he mugs and breaks the fourth wall a lot, but I know a lot of people love him, so Plastic Man's going to be a thing. His mini will probably be a lot like Mr. Fantastic's mini. Next is a villain by the name of Plastic. She causes explosions, hence the name Plastic. Moving on, the hero known as The Question, who is a part of uh, the Gotham world, the question has always fascinated me, so I wanted to throw him in there. And he's also going to be considered to be part of the Gotham Knights team because there will be team decks in DC United, because why not? So you'll be able to add the question to uh, your team if you're playing with that mode. You will also be able to add the next hero to your Gotham Knights team mode, and that is the Red Hood. He's uh, one of the newer ones, right? He's Jason Todd. He came back uh, after Joker beat him to death, and he decided, I'm angry now, I'm the Red Hood. People like him. He's the Raphael of the Gotham Knights, and uh, he will be a, a playable hero in this Fresh Gold box. So will the next character, Red Tornado, who uh, was created by a mad scientist to be an uh, enemy of the Justice League, and then they bypassed his circuits or whatever, and now he's a hero. In my opinion, he is very much the DC equivalent of the Vision. The Vision was in the stretch goal box. Red Tornado's in the stretch goal box. It all fits. 
Next up is the Wonder Woman villain, Silver Swan. Uh, she just has a very cool look to her too, a very unique look for a villain. Uh, I wanted to represent some Wonder Woman characters, give them some love because her world kind of doesn't get played with as much as I think it should. And next is a villain from Aquaman's world by the name of Siren. I believe she's Mira's sister, except she's really mean. And Mira and her sister can do like these water bending things that Aquaman can't. So Siren will be a fun villain to play off against. And she speaks to the sea life as well. So she's going to have probably a lot of henchmen who are like hammerhead sharks and things like that. And Siren will obviously have translucent water effects on her mini as she jumps out of the ocean in a very evil way. Uh, the sculptors will make it look evil somehow. Next is a hero who I think think not only does she have to be in the stretch goal box, but she should be front and center on the stretch goal box artwork because I would love to see her in chibi form. And that is Supergirl. I mean, come on, baby. It's Supergirl. She rocks. For me in the Marvel box, it was all about like, I can't wait to play as She-Hulk. Here it's, I can't wait to play as Supergirl. So I'm going to have her front and center. I don't care. She's going to be the star of this box as far as I'm concerned. I want Supergirl to be in this and, uh, and she, it's happening, right? She's, she's a mainstay. She's here. Next is the villain known as The Thinker, who uh, is going to outthink all of the heroes a bunch of times. And he's got all these nodes sticking out of his head. If you saw the second Suicide Squad movie, he was in it, and that's what he looks like. He's also on The Flash show, but he looks a little different there. But The Thinker is cool. He's a great villain. Let's have him in here. Let's also have the villain T.O. Moro, who is a mad scientist. There's a lot of mad scientists in DC, uh, but he's one that kind of, uh, you know, stands out from the crowd. I believe he is the one who invented Red Tornado. So maybe T.O. Moro will come with a Red Tornado henchman card as a threat card. A mad scientist seems like a fun villain to go up against, and I don't think we've had any of those in Marvel United. So it's something different. Next up, we have two villains who will both be part of Flash's rogues gallery. One of them is the Trickster, kind of Flash's answer to the Joker. Uh, and Trickster has a bunch of tricks and toys and traps, and he's always laughing and giggling. And hey, Mark Hamill even played him a couple times. Uh, he's very colorful looking too. He looks like a court jester. He's going to be able to be added to the rogues mode. And so will the next villain, the Weather Wizard, who has a really cool outfit. And he carries a magic wand that could control the weather. He's basically Evil Storm. Uh, he might be a really powerful adversary to go up against. Uh, I think that he can be one of the ones that you can make especially challenging in terms of these uh, stretch goal villains. Finally, our last stretch goal is a hero who we all know and love. I have had a crush on her since I was a little kid, but that's neither here nor there. It's Zatanna. With her top hat and her magic skills, she represents part of the supernatural world of DC. Zatanna rocks. She's crossed paths with Batman a bunch of times. She's crossed paths with Green Arrow a couple times. Uh, she's also been a member of the Justice League. She's just amazing. So Zatanna has to be in here. And the idea of having one of these little United minifigures wearing a top hat? Yes, friggin' please. Now, I mentioned the team decks. And I think if uh, memory serves me right, if I'm looking at everybody together here, uh, all of the hero teams that you could possibly play with from what we have in season one anyway, you will get the following team decks. Atlanteans, Gotham Knights, Justice League, Kryptonians, Speedsters, the Suicide Squad, and the Teen Titans, right? I think most of the characters fit into one of these categories. Obviously more team decks will be unlocked in future seasons. If there's any team that I'm forgetting that is represented by these season one characters, please let me know. And last but not least, we want an all-in bonus, right? We want to make people feel like they got their money's worth if they go all-in on DC United. So as an all-in bonus, you are getting the only giant-sized miniature in the whole set. You are getting the hero, Adam Smasher. And Adam Smasher is a lot of fun. So that's all the characters we'll be unlocking. And that would be, in this guy's humble opinion anyway, a pretty darn solid DC United Season 1. Will that ever hit a Kickstarter at some point? I hope so. My wallet doesn't, but I do. Uh, now, like I said at the top, I didn't stop there. I went ahead and carried through with not only DC United Season 2, but even Season 3. DC's got a pretty hefty load of characters, and I wanted to give them all the credit that they deserved. 
So next time on Digital Charcuterie, stay tuned for part two of this video where we will talk about this hypothetical DC United and what its second season might look like, keeping in mind those parallels we talked about. If season two was all X-Men stuff and that just took one particular pocket of the universe and rolled with it, how can we take that and apply it to DC? Can it even be done? Until then, I have been Andrew Fantasia. You have been awesome. And may you all be the masters of your own universe.